Hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. All right, so, Arknights. Let's see, not a whole, whole lot to go over tonight. Yeah, basically I will just go over the usual business, and then we'll try to get into things without too much more dillying or dallying. So yes, tonight, Arknights. Next week, we should be seeing some more of the usual schedule. I am expecting roughly 8.30, or yeah, most likely 8.30 p.m. Wednesday for the next Arknights stream. Yeah. I had mentioned previously that I was expecting this to be the collab stream with Sheppy Sheps this Friday, because that will be every other Friday going forward, but uh, a scheduling change had to be made, so. As I understand it, assuming nothing else changes, we should be seeing the stream next week, ideally. But yes. I will have more to say on that when it comes closer, I would imagine, but probably just We'll see what happens, I suppose. Yeah. So, what I know for sure, again, is that Wednesdays we'll be playing Arknights. Then, on Fridays, when we are collabing with Chevy Sheps, we'll be continuing Coffee Talk, concluding Coffee Talk, almost certainly the next time we play it, and then moving on to whatever other project there, or, well, <laughs> I say whatever other, as though I don't know precisely what game we're going to be playing next, but you know. Gotta keep a little bit of a mystery, I suppose. But yes. Where was I? Somewhere, I think. Right, so. Next Wednesday, Ark Nights. Next Friday, probably collab? If not, Ark Nights. And that will be the general tempo going forward. But yes. Ideally, I would like to... I would like to uh, start a little bit earlier... It's roughly 9 o'clock right now. Yeah, I'd like to start closer to 8.30 on Fridays as well. So I'm going to try to aim for that. It's a little bit more challenging, because I do work later, later in the week. But I think it should be manageable. In this case, I just wasn't particularly prepared on this day. There was a lot I probably could have done before work to get start, to get ready. But yes. So, ah, I suppose other Arknights related business. But yeah, no Operator Spotlight is ready again today because I did not have time to get prepared on that. I had to do some other work this morning. Yeah, plus they take, can take a fairly long amount of time. So, it's somewhat unlikely at this point that we'll be doing more than one per week. And this has just been kind of a challenging week for me. As mentioned, I've been a little bit ill. So, on the times when I have had time, I haven't had energy, and the times that I have had energy, I haven't had time, broadly speaking. So, anyway, let's see. I think that should be everything that needs to be gone over. We talked about today. We talked about the schedule for next week. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I think I've mentioned it before. You know, we used to stream more than twice a week. Yeah, getting back up to twice is a pretty good achievement as far as I'm concerned from having not streamed consistently for a good while. So I still don't have immediate plans for streaming uh, more often. Yeah, that'll be something... Yeah, I don't know. I was going to say that'll be something for when I'm... to consider when I'm a little bit better. Or a little bit better in uh, terms of health, I should say. But it's not like this has been an ongoing issue, nor is it one that I will expect to be a persistent one. It is just a passing illness. But yes. So, let's see. Anything else to be said? Yeah, I guess it is true that it... Yeah. So, it is true that it's something to consider probably when I'm a little bit healthier. But again, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It shouldn't be something to concern ourselves with too much. It'll be a while after that, if nothing else. But yes, anyway. So, I think that is basically all that needs to be said. At least once, sometimes twice. Yes, let us get back into the game. 
I was worried earlier a little bit. I was worried a little bit because I was doing another bandwidth test after that pretty terrible experience I had a few days ago with the internet just being very, very troublesome. I decided to, I, don't know, I guess I just sort of got into the habit of testing a little bit and it's good now. It was a little bit shaky earlier, but we're doing good now. But yes. Anyway, I don't see much more reason to delay, so let us continue. Last time, we completed, but not terribly completely, <laughs> a quite challenging map here. We defeated a boss level, but not the boss in it. And once again, getting that fully cleared is something that I will deal with on my own time, I think. At the very least, I'll do the rest of the strategizing on my own time, I think. But yes, for now, we will continue as we were. Tonight's stream might be a little bit short as well. But yes, I think our team should be fine. Let us resume. <clears throat> We've arrived. What a depressing place. Any mention of this on the news? None. By the looks of things, Ursus decided to abandon this place. A deserted city, huh? If this city has already become a reunion stronghold, it's only going to cause more problems for Lung Men. It's too close to Lung Men. But if Skull Shatter was taking commands from this place, we can't afford to ignore it. But what exactly happened to this part of Chanabog? It's impossible for it to have moved this far after being hit by the catastrophe. And why would it appear here? From the observation data we've gathered, this happened in the aftermath of the catastrophe. Which means that this subsection was destroyed only after it reached here. Huh. So it seems like Rhodes Island has some skilled catastrophe messengers. Good to be cautious. We've been ambushed by poorly organized thugs our entire way here like vultures circling overhead looking for carcasses among the ruins. Makes my skin crawl. I've confirmed the coordinates. We'll have to continue moving deeper. But, judging from the terrain, we won't be able to move all our forces together. Are we approaching the originium dense parts? Uh-oh. I didn't expect you to be here. Chen, what do you think? Mm, Chen? How? Hmm? Mm, Chen, where are you going? <sighs> she just took off running. Who could that have been? I didn't manage to get a good look either. But that silhouette seemed like... We have to follow her. Stop! What bad timing. That guy is no ordinary henchman. And where did all those originium slugs crawl out from? Those creatures look like they might explode. Dr. Tiber, make sure our operators exercise utmost caution. All right, will do. It is I who probably needs to exercise caution more so than anything, but I appreciate the advice nonetheless. Don't worry. We'll be right back. Huge, unstable heat reaction has been detected on some nearby land. Our operators may take high damage if they approach without adequate preparation. However, our enemies will also suffer the same damage. What if we can make it work for us instead? I never did get used to the stench of war. Yeah, it occurs to me that I kind of forgot to do my PRTS voice there, but oh well. Yeah, I'm a little bit low energy tonight. I feel like that's also been somewhat common recently. Yeah, I suppose given circumstances. I've been assuming that these would, yeah, pumps out high temperature gas periodically. Yeah, I was assuming initially that they would just be doing damage constantly, but that is certainly not the case. Given the mention of Originium Slugs remission, I feel like Deploying Meteorite promptly is probably good. Jessica will also probably want... I can see that we have 
a drone fort. I almost feel like we should face her this way, though I don't know if we have enemies, or if we have uh, enemies with ranged attack, this will be a bad idea. But, we don't know that yet. We're still gathering intel. Ah, I... <laughs> Uh, I say with the with the Molotov throwers on screen. Okay, sorry Jessica. My bad. Thank you for your service. Alright. So we're going to hopefully hopefully not going to suffer too much from what we've just experienced there. Since we have Earth Spirit on the team, we might as well make use of her. Um I should probably deploy a medic sooner rather than later. No problem. Yes, we don't have... Everyone, yeah, we don't have complete coverage now that I think about it. Here comes the drones. I didn't get Jessica evacuated quite as quickly as I might like. The Arts Guard will probably... Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say the Arts Guard will probably be... Hmm. Okay, so yes. Texas can deal with them. That was probably a bad time to use Texas, but it is what it is. Since the drones... Yes, okay, it does seem that the, the information that I found was uh, correct. And the, the skill does prioritize airborne targets. Mm, I don't feel like we really need to use Earth Spirit skill right now because it does decrease our DPS. Okay, now we want Jessica. We probably wanted Jessica a little while ago, but... Okay. Alright, easy peasy. So Jessica's not doing great, but she is surviving. And we can get our... Yeah, we can get our... Uh, vanguards out of here. I think they've served us well enough. And let's deploy Estesia. Actually, no, we've got... She does have somewhat better resistance, but okay. we're dealing with a lot of enemies with, uh, yeah, I don't want to use Estesia necessarily, or I don't want to use Estesia necessarily because we're dealing with a lot of enemies that probably have pretty good resistance on the on their own. And it occurs to me I have made something of a tactical blunder because I wasn't paying super close attention to where precisely enemies were having. Yes, yeah, so. Oh dear. Yes, these uh, exploding slugs are no joke. Especially because they're not slugs. Hmm. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this, and I don't think Meteorite's gonna like this either. So uh, let's just deal with them quickly. Okay, there we go. Oh. Well. Hmm. So. Alright, so I think we might have lost here, but maybe we didn't. No, we definitely lost. Okay. Oh well. Data gathering. Yes. So, I don't think we really needed to level up there. I think we just needed to revise our strategy a little bit. So yeah, so the exploding slugs, and they are slugs, don't make any... <laughs> Make no bones about it, these are slugs as far as the game is concerned. Tip. Yeah, so those are a problem. We're probably going to want to deal with those quickly and from a distance. So we're going to need to consider how we're going to achieve that. Yeah. I do know some strategies. I do know some strategies already that would be pretty good. There are some characters that could pretty easily counter them. But yes. So, given the fire, I don't know how much I want to rely on that. I was thinking we might want to use that as an asset, but I don't think we really want enemies to get close enough to... Yeah, we don't want enemies to get close enough to really be affected by it. But yeah, given the slugs and all that, we don't want the we don't want the enemy to be able to group up 
towards our back lines. That would be bad. So we might want to use more delaying tactics. Though the precise tactics that we want to use are, as of yet, a little bit unclear to me. But yeah, I think placing a medic in a more forward position than I usually would is probably going to give us a good amount of benefit here. That is, of course, not the only option available to us, but it's a good one, I think. Look straight ahead. Not concerned about the unstable heat reaction. So yeah, so this upper path is the one the enemies from the top here are going to appear along, I think. If we play our cards right, we might actually be able to block this a lot of this area with just one operator. In fact, yeah, we don't need... We don't necessarily need Fang right away. It might be good to have her anyway, just for the sake of the additional... Uh, yeah, the additional uh, deployment point generation. And, you know, to deal with enemies a little bit faster. So yes, we're not at a phase of the mission where I really need to be particularly cautious with... Okay, I'm forgetting... <laughs> I'm forgetting now that, uh, or I had forgotten that Texas actually has pretty low defense. Significantly lower than Fang. We do have some enemies going to where Fang is. Okay, so basically, I was as I was thinking, we're probably going to want, though I don't know, hmm, how much defense does Earth Spirit have versus, say, Gaviel? Can't look at Gaviel's stats while the game is paused. Comparing to Hibiscus, who is admittedly higher level. Okay, yeah, Earth Spirit actually has a lot lower. Well, I don't know. At this, with the just generally low, this is this was a mistake. Um, hmm. All right, another tactical blunder there, but we will make up for our mistakes to some degree. I don't like what's going on here. And I don't... This was probably a bad time, to be honest. Um... Hmm. I just realized... Okay, no, that's not gonna work. Um... So yeah, the Molotov users were not... Not necessarily our greatest concern. I got a little bit tunnel vision there. Of course, I say that, and then the Molotov users are <laughs> dismantling my forces, but oh well. Hmm. So, we definitely need a stronger unit. Ah, right. Okay. So this might just be a wash. We could probably salvage it, maybe, but honestly, I'm not into that. So we're going to try again. Feet, but it's not time to quit yet. Yes, yeah, so let's think that through a little bit more. So, if we really wanted to have a unit hereabouts, we're going to need someone a little bit tougher than someone a little bit tougher than Earth Spirit, I think. Yeah, Gaviel probably wouldn't have been able to stand up to an extended uh assault either. What does the defense look like on snipers? Not much better and probably a lot worse. Hmm. A good chance to avoid physical and arch attacks does sound good. Plus Jessica does have more defense. Yeah, the main thing that I was thinking of, however, and let's bring out the movie here, just for safety. Yes, I was thinking, I've mentioned it before, but certain operators, so pulling and pushing operators, can be deployed on both melee and range tiles. And because they're designed to be deployed on melee tiles, they actually have appreciable defense. So, we don't want to push enemies forward, that seems like a bad idea. But, we could pull them towards us. 
and I was kind of thinking about trying to see if I could solve this without her. But Snow Sant might be a specific, or well, there's no might about it. She is definitely a, she is custom built for this sort of thing because uh, Snow Sant actually is notable for her bug catcher talent, which allows her to silence creatures such as these slugs, which means that their, their special abilities will not activate. They can still attack and such and so forth, but they will not explode. Yes, Snow Sant is purpose built for this sort of thing. And she's pretty tough. I kind of wanted to not, but I suppose there's no real reason in not using a tool that is that the game gives you specifically for this purpose. It is in fact okay. But yes. So Snow Sant will be replacing the position Earth Spirit had in sort of the tactical, tactical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? In our tactics. Beyond that, I think I might also, since I replaced Jessica instead of Earth Spirit anyway, I might also want to introduce another type of unit whom we haven't used much. Yes. In fact, I don't think we've used one at all. But the specific type of unit that I want to, to make use of is bum, 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 bum. Yes. the Deadeye Sniper. Yes. So Deadeye, oh, hold on. There we go. I forgot to get rid of the movie. Oh, I got rid of the wrong movie. Where did, where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Anyway, we fixed it. Yes, Deadeye Snipers, such as Firewatch, who we've, who, whom we've mentioned before, have an extremely long range, especially once they've been promoted. And so that makes them pretty good. I was thinking uh, initially of using a Deadeye Sniper as my primary way to deal with the slugs before they got close to us. And I might still make use of Firewatch for that purpose. In fact, I'm going to put her on the team and sort of see how things shake out. Because yes, I'm not a hundred percent sure. The team is complete. Yes, I'm not a hundred percent sure how I would need to position Snow Sant to ensure that the slugs get taken care of regardless. But yeah, so given what we saw there as well, we're not going to be able to rely upon using just one unit to block the uh, the uh, objectives there. Yeah, we are going to be need two, though we don't necessarily need two immediately. Let's go. All right. Enemy spotted. Prepare to fight. Crosswords. Yeah, Texas's defense isn't that much lower than uh. Well, I don't know. I was going to say it's not that much lower Resistance. than Fangs, but. Given the way that defense affects the amount of damage that you take, it's pretty decently significant. Because, yeah, that's... Assuming that they're both, you know, getting hit by enemies that are equally tough. Yeah, or that deal equal amounts of damage. Yeah, Texas is taking 60 more damage per hit. And, you know, she only has so much HP. Okay, so, I need to be careful, because I don't want to deploy Snow Sand early. Yeah, I want to make sure that she is on the field after we've placed a medic. Because we want to be able to draw the enemy's attention away from the medics. Yes, we have a manual skill on Snow Sand right now. So I think what might be good... Because yeah, I don't know that the slugs go this way specifically. I think they go more like... Well, they definitely go here because they come from the bottom rank. We've seen that. This doesn't feel super good to me strategically, but it is what it is. Yes, Firewatch is in position. We could have also given her some evasion, I'm realizing now. But yeah, so anyway, Dead Eye Snipers have long range. They typically have pretty high damage, too. Hmm. 
Yeah, that was okay. Not great, but not terrible. Yeah, Fang is going to need backup soon. Yes, we're we're actually pretty okay. We do have a medic backing up. We do have a medic backing up Texas. Yeah, I think we're going to be pretty okay here. Having a more traditional sniper would probably also be beneficial to deal with these drones. I wonder if I can catch the drone. Well, not like that, certainly. Hopefully, though, uh, hopefully, though, it'll stay in Firewatch's targeting priority. We can still rely upon, no and we probably will need to, but we can, no we probably will need to rely upon, uh, Meteorite to deal a little bit more damage every now and then. Hmm. I don't like what's going on here, to be honest. He's taking a lot more damage than I would prefer. So let's deal with that. So yes, we could use another defender. We might not need one, but we maybe could use one. Ready for action. We're doing pretty okay. Yeah, the only question in my... Well, yeah, if I were to switch out to another defender, that would mess up my ranks a little bit. Right? Yeah, that was weird that it wasn't activating. Ah, slug. There we go. Perfect. Yes. So the slug was probably far enough away that it really wouldn't have been too much of an issue anyway. Hmm, this is bad. Oh, this is really bad, actually. Hold on. Um, hmm. Okay, I let things get away from me a little bit there. I don't know why my skills are not activating consistently. Um, hmm. Okay, so we've lost again. So yes, these uh, <laughs> these arts or these arts enemies are no joke, huh? So yeah, so we've lost this as well. No, first aid needed. We might actually. We might honestly want another medic, possibly. Hmm. All told, the slugs were not that big of a problem. So Firewatch might have been a little bit of an overreaction on my part. Honestly, well, having the option of Snow Sand or Firewatch, or yeah. Having one or the other is good, I think. Having both, hmm is a little bit iffy, perhaps. That's it. Yeah, the extremely forward positioning might have also been something of a mistake. Though so again, I didn't keep very close track of the exact route that the... Yeah, of the exact route that the enemies would take. Or that the slugs would take. Yeah, they don't come super often, so as long as we can take them out consistently, that's n they aren't too big of a deal. I'm thinking we might want to place Fire... or not Firewatch, Frostleaf a little bit more forward as well. And probably be a little bit more aggressive with using her skill. We've got a lot of manual skills, and I'm not used to having manual skills pretty much at all. <laughs> so, uh, my apologies for not managing them quite as effectively as I maybe could have. I think I might actually, for the purpose of giving myself less to uh, worry about, I might, for some characters at least, switch over to automatic skills where, where applicable. Yeah, slowing, binding is good. Finding is good. I think we'll stay with Ice Tomahawk. Snow Sand. Yeah, that's every six-ish seconds. But since we don't need to... We don't need to... Eh. We don't need to catch most enemies. We only need to catch these slugs. So... Hmm. Yeah, I think... 
if we're going to be placing units very forward, it might be beneficial to actually place them very forward. But yes, we, it might be beneficial to actually have sort of half our forces concentrated about here, whereas the rest concentrate back here. Because, yeah, the problem there... Well, I don't know, because I mainly my concern is I want to be... The, I want to be putting damage on enemies consistently. Yeah, whereas right now we've kind of been only putting damage on them once they get towards the end. Because for Fire... or for Snow Sans, many virtues, she isn't that good at dealing with a lot of enemies. Yeah, her particular... Yeah, she's not... You know, she doesn't shoot super fast. She's got decent attack. But her attack isn't that good. In fact, yeah, it's probably not that great, to be honest. Yeah, it's a little bit better than, than I expected compared to some of the other operators. Actually better than some of the guards, to be honest. Eh, okay, she might have a bit better damage than I was thinking of. But she still attacks slowly, and she still has, you know, a very specific role to fill. So again, something to think about. Yeah, placing operators a little bit more forward might be beneficial for some purposes. But we definitely want to be dealing with enemies before they group up, ideally. Because, yeah, that seems to have been the big problem there. So, of course, again, we do... Whoops. We do also have the... Yeah, the arts guards to deal with, who have... Uh, hmm. Actually, okay, yeah, I was going to say. I saw elemental resistance, and I saw effect resistance, and I got a little bit confused there. But, uh, but yes, resistance, the actual just R-E-S stat, is the one that's most relevant. But, uh, or is the one that is relevant to what I was thinking of. So yes, they do have pretty high resistance. I don't know that... Yeah, most of the enemies here aren't going to have very high resistance, but the ones that are... The ones that do have high resistance are the ones that are the annoying ones. So... One thing that we could do... One thing that we could do is we could actually put Manticore on the team again. We could put Manticore on the team again. I'm a little bit nervous about potentially exposing her to slugs, but, you know, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Yeah, again, she has a... she has a, uh... dodge skip, or a dodge trait inherent to her class. Okay. So that might just be able to preserve her in the face of exploding slugs. All right, I am very familiar with the heat. All is well. Let us simply get underway. Yeah, Manticore. I'm probably going to want to promote Manticore one of these days. She's definitely earned it, I think. So, yes. So, think about things a little bit more. The extremely forward positioning... Again, it's probably best if we have more units sort of in this general area. And given that enemies are going to be going along that route more or less to get up through here and to there, that's probably actually a pretty decent idea. Whereas we can have sort of another set of our units covering this sort of path. So having a medic here facing downwards and then healing units in this area would probably be good and we could then have a medic maybe here maybe here and covering that side and of course we do need to get through the early game first that shouldn't be too too challenging but we do have to keep it in mind Yeah, again, Manticore, Manticore's uh, ability to dodge makes her a pretty good asset. 
think, yeah, we had snow sand facing downwards. Yeah, makes her a pretty good asset. And one that is very survivable is the main thing. The ability to attack all enemies sort of on the ground around her is also very valuable. Yeah, placing a defender where Gummy is now is something that I had concerned, or concerned? Considered, rather, earlier. Uh, I had ultimately ch I had ultimately decided against it. But, I think I'm probably going to decide in favor of it now. So yes, our deployment is a little bit full right now. But we should be able to retreat excess before too long. Yes, one nice thing is that we're getting a lot of good damage. We're getting a lot of good, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not damage. We're getting healing out of Gummy's skill. Hmm. Well, I didn't think about the drones this time, and I've made a tactical blunder. So, hmm. What are we going to do about that? I guess we... There's not much we can do about it. I think we're just going to have to uh, right. take the L, basically. Um... We might be... Okay. Amiya can handle it to some degree, it seems like. So that's nice. Um, Amiya can handle it pretty well, actually. This is not ideal. I would rather have her placed a little bit more aggressively if I was going to use her. But, yeah, this was, again, just kind of a mistake on my part. Alright, might as well... Start dealing damage to them earlier. I don't think this net is going to get the slug. Oh, okay. I think it maybe prioritized the slug. That's nice. I think the slug... Mm, we need to... Yeah, too late. Um, we're losing out on the healing. Mm, this is bad. All right. Well, so yes, we didn't quite have the consistent slug silencing that I was hoping for. It does seem that Manticore completely avoided their attacks, you know, by chance, but... Um, oh dear. Oh, Amiya went down. Oh dear, that's quite bad. Um, I guess we could have used Crossleaf also earlier. So, yeah, we don't have the damage in Frostleaf or in uh, Snow Sand's Neck of the Woods. Hmm. Okay, that drone is going to get through because we don't. Yeah, because Frostleaf is not able to do ranged attacks. Okay. Well, we got pretty close to the end there. So, yes. So, the drones were the big issue. If we'd had a sniper there instead of Amia, or, you know, a sniper akin to Jessica. What's... I don't remember what the word for those snipers are. For her particular branch. But, yeah, if we'd had Jessica there instead of Amia, we would have done well. I feel like Manticore... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how good her slows were. Whoops. They definitely were. They definitely were impactful. Definitely weren't impactful, but I'm not... I don't know. <laughs> what is the slow on Earth Spirit? Does it say? No. Um, does it say maybe... Okay. Oh, 80%. Okay, so that that is, in fact, more significant. So that might be worth considering. Hmm... So yeah, so trying to think, if I were to... I'm not going to place... Well, actually... I was going to say, I'm not going to place Earth Spirit. Well, no. Okay. I was briefly considering placing Earth Spirit in the, again, very forward position. But no, that will not happen because she will take too much damage and die. So, 
instead, I think Snow Sant or another pull operator like her, but really there's no one like her quite, would be the only, uh, only reasonable choice for the circumstances we're facing. But yes, we need to be able to deal with the drones. So having a unit in the position that Amia was in, who's a little bit better at dealing with drones would be good. And for that purpose, we'll almost certainly use Jessica. But yeah, on the lower part, I like having, I liked having, the skills didn't quite line up because I wasn't quite using them as effectively as I could, but I liked having Meteorite. I liked having Meteorite paired with Snow Sant there because then, assuming circumstances allowed for it, which they didn't always, I could uh, quickly deal some extra damage to the slugs that had been captured to take them out quickly. Because again, they only get they only get silenced for so long. Yeah, given that though, I don't think I don't think we can really afford to place Earth Spirit. I don't think we can really place Earth Spirit there. That's another thing I was thinking of, if not here. I don't think placing Earth Spirit here would really give me much value. You'd only extend this far, which would be okay. But we don't want the slugs to explode near Snow Sant because Snow Sant is the only one who can deal with them. <laughs> so really my only, my only options to deal with the slugs are either destroy them immediately as soon as they spawn or destroy them when Snow Sant hooks them. And again, I didn't pay super close attention to how the slugs move after they spawn. But yes, all things considered, yeah, we're going to revise the strategy a little bit once again. Swapping out Amia for Jessica, I think, is the best, best option. I guess we could use Ash, but honestly, <laughs> that feels a little bit unnecessary. The damage increase, I don't know, I don't, given the struggle I've had keeping up with the manual skills we already have, I don't think adding another one to the mix is going to improve our tactile situation any. Gummy's fine as she is. Yeah, Gummy's fine as she is. Um, Estesia, Estesia really isn't doing a whole lot of good for us. Because we're facing a lot of enemies that have high arts resistance. On the other hand, on the other hand, a thing that we could use, or a person we could use even. Savage or Quartz, I think, would be pretty okay. I feel like Savage might be a little bit better than Quartz for this specific purpose, because we're not dealing with that many high arch damage enemies. We're only dealing with a few. I feel like Quartz and her complete lack of defense would be something of a liability in a lot of cases, in a lot of places. I do like Quartz. <laughs> I do like Quartz as the thing, and I like using her. Yeah, my main thought here is I wanted to be able to do a little bit more AoE damage, because the enemies aren't getting dealt with fast enough and they're piling up and reaching our defenses. So I think we just need to be able to take them out faster, and given the enemies have resistance, I don't think Estesia is really the go-to. The Chonka is also a fun choice. And we could... We could also try Chen. Chen's ability to stun... Chen's ability to stun would actually be quite valuable. Yeah, it would allow her to make up somewhat for her you know, lack of resistance and all that. But yes. I don't know. I think we'll start out with Quartz. Mm, you know what? I definitely don't want the damage increase. <laughs> I don't want the damage taken increase. That seems bad. Yeah, the extra damage I I can help. is maybe good, but I don't want to take more damage in return. We're already going to be taking quite a bit of damage from the, again, total lack I'll of defense. I'll do my best to take care of everyone. Enemy status confirmed. All units, prepare to engage. 
All right. Again, we might. I don't know. Yeah, we'll roll with things as they were. Because, yes, most of this was pretty sound, I think. Yes, we need to deploy a medic before we deploy Snow Sand. So that Snow Sand will get the targeting priority. This is fine. We're not expecting a lot of damage. So I might want to deploy another a medic here soon. Ah, I think we didn't... I don't think we used a medic really much. Though, okay, right. The reason that we didn't is because we deployed Gummy early. Right, right, right. We might want to deploy Gummy a little bit later if we can. And I guess, yeah, even before the slugs and whatnot spawn, we can still use her skill. In fact, we probably should be using her skill. Um, yeah, actually, right, we do... I was kind of thinking against it, but it might actually be beneficial to get a few enemies into this sort of ill box, so to speak. Yeah, being able to put a little bit more damage down with Jessica is nice. Cut them to pieces. Yeah, our medics do have more defense and more health no, than comparable snipers. So we might actually want to deploy the snipers first. I think I might want to place Meteorite a little bit more forward so that she can cover a little bit more ground. Yes, the crossbow wielders are going to be still something of a concern, but they're not that much of a concern. Bang, I think we can pretty safely remove from the mix at this point. I didn't pay super close attention to where exactly enemies are going. Yes, yeah, so I don't know precisely how I want to place our units. I don't want know precisely where I want to place my units to ensure that they don't uh, take, or so yeah, so that we don't let enemies through to the objective. Freeze. Jessica is slowly taking damage, which is a grave concern. <laughs> um, placing her here would probably have been good. Now that I think about it. All right, once these enemies are sort of a little bit closer together, that's good. Ah, no, 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 this is bad, this is bad, actually. <laughs> okay, hmm. Um, how do we want to do this? Because this slug is going to cause problems. Hmm, and Gummy has just experienced problems also. Um... Because, yeah, we're not getting the damage we need. Um, hmm. Okay, yes. Ah, right, I forgot. We could have been using a medic also. <laughs> hmm. We did have a medic, but we could have used more medic. Um, so. I guess this is an opportunity... Well, no, because that enemy was going along a different path. Um... Goodbye. Um, oh no, actually. It didn't take that much damage, to be honest. This is still not going good, but we've learned a little bit more. But yeah, we definitely didn't, uh... Yeah, I didn't think to deploy another medic, so that's entirely on me. Yeah, okay. So at least I know what path the enemies coming from the south side are, are uh, progressing along this time. You did very good, Jessica. Don't worry. So yes, anyway, given that, I think probably here facing west 
would be best for Jessica. I thought to place her a little bit more forward, but I don't think we're really getting that much value out of that. Because, yeah, again, or like, you know, here being more forward. I don't think we're getting a lot of benefit out of this specific region. So placing her forward like this is probably gives us pretty much the same amount. I think it might give her... No, I think it'd give her about the same, same amount of coverage on the drones. Hmm. Unfortunate. Um, the yeah, enemies were bunching up there again. We definitely want to deal with that a little bit more. I'm not 100% sure of how we would do that. I guess we... Yeah, because the thing is... Yeah. Okay. Part of the problem, at least, was the fact that our defenders were operating outside of the range of any good uh, additional damage sources. So the very forward position, though I was initially thinking of it as, again, sort of just a way to... Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. So since we know now that the slugs are going to take a path like roughly this. And again, I didn't... No matter how many times I'm mentioning it, I'm just not watching the specific line as it appears, but... Yeah, given that these slugs take a path not unlike this, maybe a, a few tiles out of that range, we can know... We can know that we want to... Or... Yes. We can know that placing snow sand like this would also be effective, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, since we can, maybe we should. But yes, being able to, or being, yeah, facing her west. Right? I feel like some exercise. Yes, facing her west is probably beneficial for a number of reasons, most notably because it gives her more time to do damage. She's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage anyway, because she doesn't have a whole lot of damage on her. But, it is damage, and we appreciate damage in this house. Got it. So yes, so this general area is still going to be sort of our main battleground, our focus point, I think. Facing Manticore slightly away will give us a little bit more coverage currently. I don't know if that's going to be a factor in the long run. Yeah, if we're going to have our forces up here, we're going to want more coverage. We don't need, we don't actually need coverage like in the fire too much because I'm not going to be placing my units there if I can avoid it. Jessica. I don't like her being this far back, but we do need the coverage on this line. Yes, so, the ideal, hmm, I just realized we haven't, hmm, should have deployed Snow Sand after our medic, but it's fine for right now, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem, because yes, we are going to be deploying more guards and defenders and whatnot. Hang in there, I'm coming. So yes, Jessica isn't protected or she isn't covered by a medic but she is you know Awaiting orders. pretty far behind the lines though she's not going to be taking a lot of damage i don't think Come on, get it together. if she takes any damage at all i'd be a little bit surprised to be honest You'll, you'll pay for that yes not a tremendous hmm. not a great out. place to put if you want treatment, you meteorite to be honest um But again, we do need the utility. Hmm. Okay, we definitely need to start swapping out some of our units soonish. I don't like all that's happening here, especially be I especially don't like how all of these enemies are. Yeah, I really don't like anything that's going on here. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> Hang in there, I'm 
All right, we can get a little bit more damage in with Frostleaf. You'll, you'll pay for that. I really don't like how Frostleaf is positioned. This whole situation is a little bit of a mess. I wish I had placed Hibiscus like one space to the right and then right. placed Meteorite like facing downwards or something. Because yeah, right now she can't contribute a whole lot to us. Alright, getting a few more attacks in on the slug. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was worried there for a second, but we're fine. Yeah, getting a little bit more damage on the slug is good. Facing, facing Gaviel up, actually, probably would have been a good strat. Gummy does have some self-sustain, and she does have uh, damage reduction in the form of her stun. But she doesn't have that much of either. Mm. Okay, fortunately the slugs don't have a huge AoE on their attack. Gummy is not doing great, but she is sur- mm. Well, she was surviving. Um, okay, these slugs are going to go down while they're still silenced? Yes, okay. Okay, okay. So this is definitely still not great, but it is a lot better than any result we've had so far, and I do think we're going to hold. Okay, we're good. Yes, I am 100% confident now. Nice. I think I've been doing practice uh, runs, so... Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Okay. Yeah. I guess given the uh, cost of this mission, it probably would have been, it's probably for the best that I was I doing practice there. Operation at the top of the hour. It'll be nope, nope, nope. To keep track okay. Time. So yeah, so we didn't need Quartz after all. We could maybe still use her, but I think the utility that Frostleaf was providing was as good, if not better. Yes. So we could position Jessica like that, but I don't know that that would give us enough time to do enough damage to the drones to really be effective. Oops, nope. There we are. Uh, actually, it would give her. Well, no. It, her range starts at the same spot, but it doesn't extend quite as far towards the objective, so that could be a problem for us. Yes. Once again, as I was thinking, we'll deploy our medics thusly. I kind of want to face Gaviel up to be able to cover more of that field. But we might... That might not be for the best. Because yeah, then she wouldn't be able to support Manticore. I could change how I position a little bit. But yeah, um... Manticore probably doesn't need a lot of support anyway, to be honest. Okay, I don't want to deploy too aggressively here while these Molotov throwers are still around. They don't do a lot of damage, but one, until that damage starts getting healed, you know, they're a problem. So yeah, Snow Sant doesn't quite have... Yeah, she's not getting her skill back quite as quickly as I would like to to deal with the slugs. Oh, use her skill, please. Thank you. Not super necessary, but I figured I might as well. Manticore... Yeah, I guess, again, I could have placed Manticore further back, but having her be more forward lets her cover more ground. I don't think, now that we've got better coverage on the back, I don't think I want to face her backwards. I think this is fine. We are going to need to place our defenders a little bit further back. Yeah, since we don't have as forward of healing. Got a little bit carried away there. That was not necessary. Um, okay. I'll show them what I can do. 
All right. A little bit more damage. Gummy, we really, yeah, we still need to be careful with Gummy. I've sort of been kind of placing Gummy and kind of forgetting about her. But that's really not the play. We do need to be a little bit more careful. But I think since we have Meteorite covering Gummy's position a little bit better, it's probably not going to be as much of a concern. I was about to lament the fact that I had positioned Gummy as early as I had and not, you know, had uh, not placed Frostleaf earlier because I do still want to place down Frostleaf. But I think having Frostleaf detract or, uh, yeah, pull some of the, yeah, pull some of the ranged aggro is probably, is probably better than I was, uh, planning on, to be honest. Um, these slugs are an issue still. It might, it might have actually been for the best if I had say, hmm, mm, this is okay. Um, we're not going to get our skill back in time to deal with those slugs, so this is going to be a little bit rough. But, we're doing okay. Mm, that's not going to cover, and Snow Sand is going to go down. Well, that gives us another uh, option here, <laughs> which is not the best, and not something that I was hoping for or planning on, but, you know... That was probably a bad idea. If I was going to use anyone, I probably shouldn't use Quartz. Quartz is going to get absolutely annihilated by all of these Molotov throwers, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Not too bad, not too bad. Actually, no, that was pretty good, actually. I'm always looking for elegant solutions, so when okay solutions happen, I kind of overlook them sometimes and assume that they aren't going to go quite as well. But, we had a good result there. We won and we didn't have any, any enemies get past our defenses, so I can't complain. <clears throat> We've defeated Reunion's forces. Bah, for a bunch of roadblocks, those guys were a bit tough. Mm, there's no sign of Chen. We're in a real mess now. He's not responding to my calls either. This part of her, her hasn't even, hasn't ever changed. LGD, all members, prepare to follow me. No, Inspector Hoshiguma. You should let us handle it. We're approaching the Originium Dent Zones left by the catastrophe. If you go any further, the healthy, the healthy risk of being infected by Oropathy. Those consequences are too dire. Furthermore, as infected... Huh. <laughs> Given your small stature, it's cute when you try to give serious speeches. Huh? 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 <laughs> I was just giving you a hard time. But, you don't have to persuade me. I understand your concern. LGD, we'll be Rhodes Island Shield. Lock the entrance and don't let a single reunion member enter or exit. We'll let the experts handle this problem. Inspector. Ah, eh, just call me Hoshiguba. Go, please, take care of Chen. Make sure you bring her back with you in one piece. I will, Hoshiguma. I swear, I'll bring Madam Chen back safely. Make sure to stay safe yourselves. Okay. Doctor, please follow me. Roach Island, let's go. Wait for me, Madam Chen. Frostleaf, Meteorite, Jessica. You'll have to stay strong. We've retrieved the recon team that we were last in contact with. It's looking really bad. Hmm. Ruber, hyperthermia, and necrosis. What's going on here? <sighs> Completely frostbitten. Weaklings. All right. Very good. Very good. Again, I cannot complain. Hmm. The red, uh, the red image here makes me dread this a little bit. 
we have been going for about an hour. I do think I would like to go a little bit longer if I can. I don't know that we're going to be able to... I don't know. I'm not, I'm not so confident about this one. Especially since it gives us uh, one of these. So yes. As this is a mission that drops a keel, I'm assuming it's probably going to be a very challenging one. We could leave this on the on a cliffhanger of me attempting a very challenging mission, but I'd like to have plenty of time to challenge it. So instead, let's go and do some of these optional missions. This one drops a piece of furniture. Nice. We might as well start with the earlier one. Yes, this is another active Originia mission, it looks like. Yeah, one thing, one thing that we hadn't Exuvia. seen Come earlier on. is that we actually haven't seen our our own units make use of Actor Virginium. And I might see if I can, I might see about doing that this time around. In position. Got it. Yeah, as much as I like Texas's skill, just because it's very cool. Or, well, mostly because it's very cool, and also because it is pretty effective. Yeah, as much as I like it, we do probably... Hmm, we're going to have dogs coming that way. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, I don't know. We should almost certainly, whatever we do, we need to start uh, deploying more and tougher units soon, I think. Um... Mm, I'm always a little bit... I always jump the gun a little bit with the defenders, I think. Hmm. Alright, so... Ah, right, because the... Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, bad. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't like what's happening here. So, probably, we should have been a little bit more aggressive with our positioning. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Because we don't have enough space to really let the enemies take a lot of damage and get worn down from the Act of Originium. So this time around, I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to... Whoops, that's not it. Yeah, in order to be able to do this, I think we're probably going to want to do what I was alluding to and deploy one of our units on the Act of Originium tile themselves. Please choose tactics that make use of my arts. Even if it's something crafty and underhanded, I won't mind. Hmm. In position. So yeah, so I think what we might want to do, and I'm not sure which defender would be best for this. Actually, it's probably Gummy, actually, because she can heal herself. And I think, yeah, the it gives you attack and attack speed. And Gummy's heal is based on her attack. Probably don't deploy Gummy yet. Well, actually, maybe deploy Gummy yet. Because we don't want... We don't know how much the rate at which she's going to be taking damage. It's sizable, but not unmanageable, I think. Um, the combination of awaiting orders and shut up is very funny to me. Um... So yeah, since they don't... Yeah, I don't think Gummy's going to give us a whole lot of value in our current position. We need to deploy a medic yesterday. Um, um, this is due... This is okay. This is manageable. Mm, this is going to be fine, I think. <laughs> this is going to be okay. Yeah, anyway, the main thing here is that I want Gummy to be where she is just to, uh, basically just to block. Which, I guess, as a defender, is kind of her whole modus operandi. But, um, yeah, mostly just to prevent other enemies from getting onto the active Originium tile, more so than it is anything else. 
I don't think... Yeah, Texas isn't going to be able to stand up to a much more assault there, so we're going to need to swap her out. Um, okay, we need to have... Hmm, I don't like Meteorite's situation here, but we can place her back and get a little bit more damage while keeping her safe. Because, yeah, one thing that I do tend to forget a little bit is that enemies dying faster means that they do less damage. And enemies doing less damage means that we need to rely less on healing. Yeah, I always tend to think of defense as just a matter of purely, you know, healing and having defensive stats. But again, taking out enemies faster will make them a not a problem sooner. This would definitely be a really good opportunity to make use of, uh... Don't get yourself killed, dummy. Yeah, this would definitely be a really good opportunity to make use of, um... Don't make use of this. Yes, yeah, this would definitely be a good opportunity to make use of... No problem. Some combination of words that I can produce, hopefully. Come on, get it together. Yeah, Gummy's other skill. Her manual skill. Well, actually, no, because it she wouldn't get as consistent heals. The heals would be stronger... Or, yeah, she'd get heals. I don't know. Her current skill is fine. I think it's probably for the best. Things are going to be pretty normal here, I think. We're not going to have any issues going forward, I don't think. I'll wait for these enemies to group up before they get grenaded. Very good. And, yeah, that should be all fine. I do wonder if with the resistance... Because, yeah, she does deal... Yeah, arts damage while the skill is active. I wonder if she's maybe reducing her damage output by uh, activating that, considering the enemies have high resistance. Oh, dear. Well... Alright, Frostleaf, uh... Was troubled there a little bit, but we pulled through just fine. I can deploy another unit here to make things a little bit faster, maybe. Tip. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, the active Orig Origineum does have a pretty massive impact on enemies. I do wonder... I do wonder what it would be like to use that for... to harness the power for ourselves. Uh... Yeah, I suppose we were, you know, using it, but not uh, aggressively, you know. Yes, we were using it about as passively as we as we conceivably could have. Yeah, Gummy not taking a lot of damage is probably for the best. Oh yeah, deploying her early is fine. Let's see, actually, if we deploy... Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We shouldn't need to overlap the medic's healing area, so we can actually place our snipers pretty forward, I think. Of course, we do need to deploy the medic at some point. Because, yes, we've got a crossbowman coming up on the top, so probably we're going to need to be kind of tight with our timing here. Please get your skill soon. Mm, this is bad, but we can work with it. Maybe not. Okay. Yes, we can work with it. Um, like so. Like so. Very good. And swap you out for Frostleaf. That was a little bit aggressive of a swap there. <laughs> so I didn't quite have the coverage that I wanted for a second there, but it's fine. Yes, very good, very good. 
and the extra range never goes amiss. Yeah, we can probably swap out Texas basically at any point. No problem. Focus fire. Don't get yeah. yourself killed, dummy. Not using Yeah, not using uh Yeah, we don't need to necessarily take out enemies quite as urgently now. So having or er, having meteorites non manual skill or first skill would probably be better in absolute terms, but you know. Not terribly concerned about it. I don't think... This is a little bit... Oh no, we're fine. I was going to say, Manticore is placed very aggressively there, but... Yeah, it's fine. Don't need to worry. All is well. Suppose we might as well use Frost Leaf skill. Get a little bit more damage. Stun them. Ooh, actually, if we wait a little bit, we can stun these enemies up top as well. Or at least stun stun a few of them. No, wait. Actually, right. Because it doesn't... Um, yes, it happens. There's more than one instance of stun, so yes. Texas probably isn't going to last much longer. I should have used uh, her grenade a little bit earlier there. Or we almost had some enemies slip through. Yeah, so here's a good example of Manticore's uh, abilities. As you can see, you know, she was deployed uh, later than Frostleaf. But, actually, was she? I think she was. <laughs> anyway, what I what I mean to say is that she, like, like I said, she has decreased priority. So since there are other targets within range of her, or within enemy attacking range as well as her, she will never be attacked. Yeah, that's good. Come on, get it together. Yeah, Durnar doesn't quite have a whole, whole lot of damage, but she has plenty. And combined with the a little bit of extra DPS from Jessica and from Manticore, yeah, the bottom area was dealt with a lot easier there. Honestly, we maybe didn't even need Gummy where she was, though I'm sure she provided some useful healing. Alright, so I think we'll call it here then. This feels like a good stopping point. I feel like I could go a little bit longer, but again, I don't want to push it too much. Yes. So, let's see. Right. Business. So, thank you for joining me for Arc Night tonight. Um, that should be it for us for the week. Though, I don't know, if I suddenly get bit by the streaming bug, maybe we'll see something on Saturday, but that's extremely unlikely. Yes. So, beyond that, um, yeah, Arc Nights tonight, um, Arc Nights next week, Wednesday, and yeah, next Friday, I believe, we should be seeing some more, uh, we should be seeing the return of the collab, yeah, assuming that everything goes as planned and everything is well, but yes, once again, I have been feeling a little bit ill, but I'm feeling a lot better now, and I continue to get better. But yes, I was a little bit worried there, because I, yeah, I, some aspects were a little bit worse yesterday than they were the day before, but they've definitely improved a lot today. So I'm pretty, pretty, eh, pretty happy with that. Sit. So yes. So. We shouldn't be seeing too many delays or, yeah, we shouldn't be seeing any, well, I don't know. I don't anticipate at this point any delays in anything or rescheduling next week. Anything could happen, as always. So, suffice it to say, I do not foresee any. Anyway, so, raid, as always, if anyone has any suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can always find a target myself. And I'll stretch a little bit. Yeah, now that I'm streaming a little bit longer, I might want to uh, take a stretch break midstream going forward. Uh, 
obvious. Not seeing any. So I think tonight we will go and visit. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Who do we want to drop by? I think actually tonight we will go and see Judo Kame. Yes, rebranded since the last time we, we saw them. Yes, is now a hedgehog turtle VTuber. Yes, a good long-term, long-time friend of the stream and all that. Um, yeah. I think anything else that needs to be said? We've already gone over the schedule. Oh, I didn't say time. Um, yes, 8.30 p.m. Central Time for the Wednesday stream. Possibly... Hopefully around the same time, but maybe closer to nine for the for the Friday stream. And once again, Wednesday will be will definitely be Ark Nights. Friday will hopefully be the collab. So now let's raid. Udo Kame. All right. So, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. It looks like they're playing some Paper Mario, the original. But yes. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much, and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>